Welcome to part three of my Azure tutorial. In this tutorial, we will learn how to configure the actual server and how to then copy our files over to the server and get them running. So here we've connected to our server again. We know that it's live, everything's accessible. You get this dashboard of management tasks. We don't really need to deal with any of this. Go ahead and either close it or minimize it. I'm just gonna go ahead and close it. What's nice about these servers is the information that you need that will probably need to be handy is right up here at the top. We have our public IP. We have our host name, which actually works uh, both within Unity as well as other systems. Uh, that host name is also here in the center top portion where uh, we're managing our remote desktop client itself. If you want this center bar to go away, just click the pin and it'll go away. Um, if you want to minimize it and get back to your own desktop, you can minimize it, you can window it, you can close it. So now we need to get into the point where we're actually configuring our Windows Server. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to either add our ports to our firewall or just disable the firewall temporarily while we do some testing. I'm going to go ahead and do it the right way by actually configuring our firewall. So first we want to dig into our control panel, open up our Windows Firewall, and we need to go to Advanced Settings. And we want to go ahead and open up those ports by using a inbound rule. So click on the inbound rules, go ahead and create a new rule for a port, select UDP. And in this case, I'm going to go ahead and open up all the 7000s so that if I want to make some more changes, I want to have to go back in here and redo this. So we can do 7000 to 7999 and then we move forward, allow the connection for all of our networks, just keep it simple. And I'm going to name this according to the class so I can find it easier. So now we have our new port. We shouldn't have to add an outbound port, but sometimes I do just to cover all my bases. So I'm going to go ahead and add a new outbound rule port UDP allow the connection and again same so now we have our inbound rule and we have our outbound rule so that should be enough to configure our Windows firewall so we can go ahead and close that off at this point our server should be configured to be able to be accessed from outside of the Azure system so next we want to actually put some useful stuff on here so I find that the easiest way to get files to a remote server is to just save them onto Google Drive have Google Drive synchronize them for us and then be able to immediately use them so first thing that I want to do is disable this enhanced security configuration because I find that really annoying. We want to open up our server manager. So we're going to go back into that dashboard that we originally started up with. And you're going to click on local server. And then here under IE enhanced security configuration, click on that and just turn that off for administrators. This will make it so that you can much more easily browse the internet from inside of the server. So I'm going to leave this just open and minimize it for now in case we need it again. So I'm going to go back to Internet Explorer and go ahead and go to download Google Drive. So you're going to download and install this just like you would on any other Windows machine. So it will be relatively easy. It just will take a while. Once Google Drive is installed on your machine, just go ahead and get it set up by logging into your standard account. So now you're just going to wait until Google Drive syncs with your external Google Drive so that it downloads all of those documents and folders to the local machine. Again, that might take a little while. Now that Google Drive is downloaded and configured, now we have to take a lot of time to install Unity 3D. Again, I'm going to skip through this installation process just to make it faster but choose get unity free download download the installer now this is going to take quite a while maybe even up to an hour to take care of this and get unity installed correctly and I'm just choosing all of the default options what's really nice about this is it will actually install Visual Studio 2015 onto the system as well enabling us to open our code in Visual Studio 2015 once Unity is installed on your system and this might take an hour or two then go ahead and log into your account just like you would anywhere else and then open up your server project 
I highly recommend that you copy your server and client project over into the actual drive itself. It'll help prevent some synchronization issues. So I'm just going to copy them here to my documents. That'll only take a minute or two. Those are copied over. Go ahead and open up your server project. And I'm going to go ahead and open up my client project as well. All right, so once your Unity projects are open, first we want to make take note of the IP address for this machine. And the IP address, the internal IP address for this machine is uh, listed here on the background, on the wallpaper. We only need to enter that into the client side. And then launch your server. And here we can see that the client successfully connected to the server using the external or public IP address. Notice we did not have to actually have a network address for the server. It just saves you a moment of work. We can send some information back and forth. So here we'll send login success. We can see that it was received correctly on the client side. Send login failure. Send a level. Send the new player data. Notice that it takes a second to populate over here. You'll notice here, send player data is implemented on the server side, but it is not implemented on the client side yet. All right, so in this case, we can see an error message, so we know everything's pretty good. Send the login from the, from the client to the server. Send a level from the client to the server. Looks like everything's good. Let's go ahead and disconnect. So that gives us a good idea that our server and our client at least work at some level. So let's go ahead and close the client here on the server and we will run it again, or run the server again. All right, so we need to go back to our local system and we need to open up Unity and we need to open our local client. And then we need to copy over our IP address from the public virtual IP address. You can also use the DNS host name so we could copy this information here as well. Either one will actually work which will make it easy later on to change or to instruct users how to connect. So we've set our network address, we've set our IP, our port address, and we go ahead and run our client and hopefully it will connect. All right, so we don't get any confirmation on the client side when we've connected, but if we go back and look at our server, we have a client connection. Uh, we see here that our client has connected successfully. So I'm going to go back Actually, I'm just going to go ahead and send a couple of messages here. Sending login success, sending login failure. I'm going to send the level. I'm going to send the player data, which may or may not work. We'll find out. And then we go back to our client side and we see we see that we received um, a success, a failure, a level, and then a message we didn't know because we haven't implemented the player message yet but this tells you if you're missing something or if you have an error in your system something unexpectedly happened so let's send a login let's send a level and then let's disconnect from the server let's go back to the server and make sure all of that happened as expected so if we look here we see our username and password we see a level and we see our uh, disconnect message here. So it looks like everything is successful. Our server and our client are connected. We're good to go.